Last season ended on a sour note. Let's start with that. With a year left on my contract as Hearts manager, if I want to achieve my goal of being like Sir Alex Ferguson and winning a Champions League on top of the Scottish Premiership, this is where I have to do it. But our Champions League runs in the past two years meant that our young players were getting noticed by the bigger clubs, as our main strikers in Yu Oikawa and Emery Tezgel were attracting interest from elsewhere. While I was able to come to terms on new contracts with youngsters like Jimmy Malloy and Wang Zhu to strengthen our position and bring in a few more youngsters to develop our U18 and B teams, we do end up saying goodbye to the likes of Dujan Sterling, Yasin Salmani, Strahenja Irakovic, and Yutaro Oda. <sighs> Speaking of Newcastle, they also decided to cause problems on purpose by trying to also get my starting goalie in Nathaniel Norsu over to them with their oil money. And Norsu, in fact, very much wants that move. Problem is, their offer sucked due to water, Norsu has a 60 million release clause on his current contract, and I'm not willing to let him go for anything less than that. He hands a transfer offer, and it's basically a cold war for the remainder of the offseason. Meanwhile, with some of the players that have moved on out of the club, we do need to bring in new blood. So, I do the one thing I've always known how to do. Jesus wants a hug! Yes, that's right. A scouting trip to Brazil later, I come back with transfer offers completed for Palmeiras' Danilo and Red Bull Bragantino's Prachedes, who helps strengthen our midfield, and along with it, we get a deal in place for Thompson Gomes Neto from Fluminense, who join us next season once he turns 18. We come back just in time to open up the season with a successful win over Aberdeen, as Yu Oikawa scores the only goal of the match, and keeps us from going back to our reputation as draw merchants on opening games. We follow suit with a 2-1 win over Celtic at their home in Glasgow. Ah! Alright, let's keep this moving along then. Thanks to Nuoso's antics, I do get a loan from Chelsea for Gabriel Swomina to help us cover in goal, and after a dominant win over Motherwell in the Scottish League Cup, Juventus finally comes around with an offer that meets Nuoso's 60 million release clause, and he finally gets his leave for bigger challenges. Bye bye, bitch. <laughs> and while Swobnina is a decent backup, we need a goalie that has a little bit of swagger in his step. Someone who isn't going to be a swaggerless dork who leaves the moment that some big money clubs come flashing in the cash like I do every single time I need to purchase a new property as Kazuma Kiryu in the Yakuza 0 Real Estate Royale minigame. <laughs> My point is, we need a goalie that's got the ability to win games and provide a little bit of <laughs> housery. It becomes kind of obvious who we should go for here. Twenty and a half million dollars later, we have Emiliano Martinez as part of the Jambos. We also got Rubens out of Atlético Mineiro in Brazil for four million on what's a bargain of a deal for a guy that can start a fullback for us. With the deadline all wrapped up, we proceed to get our Champions League matchups, and while we have some tough games with our current core of players, we are. Now that I've got that out of my system, we use St. Johnston as a warm-up for our newer players and end up with a comfortable victory before hosting Real Betis for our first Champions League game of the season. It's a game in which the Spanish side is in over their heads as we beat them 4-0 with an Oikawa brace as he's now the main striker up front and who we will be counting on to score goals for the club. Ross County and Motherwell are the next teams in the Premiership who get trounced as preparation. Because I circled a certain Champions League game on my calendar after the little stint they pulled during the transfer window deadline. Liverpool at Anfield. Unfortunately for them, I had the bigger laugh as I watched our team walk into Anfield and win 2-1 against Liverpool to walk away with 3 points and my former striker not being able to score a single goal on me in the process. Ah! Ah! 
Oh, come on, man. I can't have shit in this house. October is a balancing act, and with two of my key players getting injured for a few weeks, the last thing I needed was yet another Scottish head coach of a mid-table team calling me overrated. We beat his team Greendale, and then sweep our way through the rest of the month, including a rather delicious win over Rangers in the Scottish League Cup quarterfinals, and beating RB Leipzig 2-0 in the Champions League. Let's ignore the fact that Hibs had their best outing against us yet, forcing us to rescue a 3 3 draw after being down 3 0. If anything, this just proves that they absolutely are the Spurs of Scotland on the fact that they let 3 goals in 15 minutes. Speaking of Spurs, we've got them on the calendar later on in November for the Champions League along with FC Midtjylland winning the game 3-1 before having back-to-back -back games against Celtic, both in the Premiership and in the Scottish League Cup semi-final. We beat them back-to-back, -back, punching our ticket into the League Cup final against Aberdeen, and then end the month with a win over recently promoted Dunfermline. But the encounter against Tottenham is still fresh in the minds of Spurs fans after the mere bottle job last season in the round of 16 against us. Two hours later. And that was a bit anticlimactic. As per usual, December packs in quite a few games altogether. We start the month off by handling our business against Dundee United, but most importantly, we secure a deal for the January transfer window as we confirm an offer to bring in Christian Eriksen from Manchester United over to us at the start of the upcoming year. Impressive. Very nice. The rest of the month sees us roll through St. Johnston, Rangers, and St. Mirren in the Premiership where we then somehow after that find a way to not lose horribly against Erling Haaland and Manchester City with a nil-nil draw. And then we've got the Scottish League Cup final against Aberdeen. Yuai Kawa and Luis Guilherme score in the second half and we lift the title for the fifth year straight. Success! To their credit, Aberdeen does get a draw out of us in the Premiership later on in the month, but we go undefeated through the rest of it, including wins after the League Cup Final against St. Johnston and Mother we Unit lost. <laughs> I just wanna know how, man, how? After renting my way into January off-screen, Christian Eriksen joins us officially along with Graham Harris, and I come back to a bunch of emails and then find out that Odin Tiago home and Yu Oikawa's release clauses got met and now they're leaving the club. She. Well, we've got some work to do here with the amount of transfer money we now have. So I went to our scouting department and we have quickly made an offer and confirmed the signing of midfielder Chamsudin Mardin from Club Bruges for 29.5 million, who looks like an absolute stud for his age. <laughs> pause. Uh, we need Wolfie in here to add an official pause to that. Pause. As we start looking for another striker, we'll be relying on Luis Guilherme and one of our other youngsters and Giuseppe Poda to carry the offense. As we hand Hibs their typical early January L, add on to Dunfermline's pains and eventual relegation with Christian Eriksen scoring his first goal as a jambo, then absolutely dominate Slavia Praha and Ludogorets to punch a top 8 finish and secure a round of 16 spot in the Champions League. It's around this time in which Felipe Coutinho announces his retirement to happen at the end of the season, after we defeated Lothian Thistle in the fourth round of the Scottish Cup, as we then end the month by soundly defeating St. Mirren and heading into the winter transfer deadline with one purpose in mind, a new striker to replace Oikawa, which we're going to need as we're up against Roma in the round of 16 of the Champions League. We actually had begun our pursuit of this particular player a few weeks before deadline, but it is during deadline day that Adam Hlozak signed on the dotted line and joined us on a 59 mil transfer deal. That was pretty much our activity. The month of February was off to a great start with three straight wins against Dundee United, Motherwell and Ross County as Hlozak already has three goals to his name in set three game. <coughs> Injuries aside, Patrick Tissel is easily dealt with in the fifth round of the Scottish Cup. Unit lost. Bro, come on! And I tell the players to just work through my frustrations with the injury gods as stompings of Ross County and St. Johnston follow suit before we go into Celtic Park and then come out of it with a 3-2 win after a decisive goal from Giuseppe Poda. 
The start of March sees our two legs against Roma, and while we have to rescue a late draw at Stadio Olimpico in Rome and make a come from behind effort to win the second leg, we do successfully get ourselves back into the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Speaking of quarterfinals, the Scottish Cup quarterfinal against Aberdeen takes place shortly after that, and thanks to Luis Guilherme, we win it 2-1 and have a semi-final match for it in April against St. Mirren. The Premiership games throughout the month are all victories as we put ourselves in a position to win the league before the Premiership split even takes place at the end of April. Which would be a welcome sight considering we're up against Manchester City in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Then the Norwegian Cyborg is coming to haunt my nightmares again, isn't he? Yeah, I like the feminism. Yeah. As we start April, our press officer sends me a nice little article detailing that I'll be coaching my 300th game when we take on Rangers, in a game that sees us with the chance of winning the title so long as we don't lose it. While we only end up with a draw, that is more than enough to seal the point gap, and we have won our third straight Scottish Premiership, securing yet another double. Now that we've got that out of the way, the focus is shifted fully to Man City who are still chasing after their first Champions League, somehow. The first leg is hosted at Dying Castle Park, and Holland scores within the first 10 minutes. However, Luis Guilherme and Adam Lozek then get us two goals halfway through the second half to make it a 2-1 game. And that's when this game goes crazy, because Christian Eriksen scores in the 91st minute to make it 3-1. We then somehow let Jack Grealish score twice, and then to add to the heart attacks, Huang Cheng Hoon gets a goal in the 96th minute to win us the first leg. Oh wow! So after a quick refresh to beat Hibs 1-0, leading up to the Premiership split, we head to the Etihad for the second leg of the quarterfinals. And with goals from Luis Guilherme and Giuseppe Poda, we win 3-1, we advance to the semi-finals once more, and Pep Guardiola adds yet another chapter to his bald fraud reputation. We definitely send a few shockwaves with that aggregate win over Man City in the competition, but it doesn't get any easier as we are set to take on Napoli in the semi-finals. But before we tackle that, we do end up playing another epic matchup as St. Mirren throws everything in the kitchen sink at us during the Scottish Cup semi-final, but we manage to survive it with a 5-4 win to advance to the final yet again, this time against Celtic. In the first leg of the Champions League semi-final, Napoli does get the better of us in the first leg with two goals in the second half, but in the second leg at Stadio Diego Armando Maradona, we grit our teeth and go at it full throttle. For 88 minutes, there's chances from both sides, but no scoring of any kind. But in the 89th minute, Jamie Malloy finds a pass to Kwon Cheng Hoon in the box and the Korean super sub soon finds the back of the net to keep our Champions League hopes and dreams alive. We go into the extra time where the scoring opportunities are almost non-existent, but in the dying minutes, it's Dr. Funk himself who steals the ball, crosses it to Luis Guilherme, and he finds the back of the net. Staggering! Just staggering! And folks, Heart of Midlothian is going to its first ever Champions League final. So losing one of our key players off the bench who scored two key goals in the last two rounds is not good. Especially considering the fact that we have Real Madrid in the final. Off! 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 We finish our games in the Premiership and then we're finally on to the last two matches of the year. A pair of finals in the Scottish Cup and the Champions League. But first, we've got to deal with Celtic. And we've got to treat this like any other key game we have had throughout this season. Two hours later. Goals by Walt Wegwurst and Zito late in the game are more than enough to carry the boys to their first Scottish Cup in quite a few years. It's a bitter pill to swallow as it is our second Scottish Cup final in a row that we've let slip. But it's one in which we're going to have to move on from because as we have Real Madrid coming up in the fight. Unit lost. Surprise, bitch. I bet you thought you'd seen the last of me. Existence is pain. And so is this Champions League final, because while we are able to hold Real Madrid to a single goal, 
scored by Vinicius Jr. in the 23rd minute. We are unable to break through the Madrid defense. They hold down the fort. The game ends 1-0 and Real Madrid claims their third straight Champions League trophy and fourth over the last six years. So with the end of the season, after putting off signing a new contract for months and months, I know what I have to do. Many unbearable hours later. We're running this back at least one more year. 